This is Preferred Home Services Friday Night Rivals, driven by Crew Chevrolet on News 4. There it is. Good evening and welcome. Week one on the official calendar, week two in your hearts, or at least our second show of the year. And with our studios in Mount Pleasant, we weren't sure we'd make it back in time with the game traffic. Well, over 6,000 seats for the crosstown east of the Cooper rivalry game pre-sold and the anticipation for the second ever meeting between Lucy Beckham and Wando even higher. Yeah, last year was simply phenomenal. An 8-6 Beckham win forces Wando principal Kim Wilson to pay up on a bet to kiss a goat at midfield as Beckham, the goat of Mount Pleasant to an absolutely packed District 2 stadium. And how about Lucy Beckham just dominating from start to finish. Aaron Kitchen with the interception deep in his own territory. Lucy Beckham drives it right back down the field and their big time tight end goes to work. Chalmers Ballard to Bryce Rockwell for the touchdown. Six nothing Bengals on top. Then it is Charles Bird running right up the middle. That's a touchdown for Beckham and they are pouring it on. On. After that, it's Ballard to Henry Brosey for the touchdown. Bengals, oh my gosh, there is no way I saw this one coming. None. Lucy Beckham beats the establishment school, Wando, for the second straight year, 43-0. 43-nothing, I repeat. Unreal. This is how we worked all week. Uh, we put we what 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 our practices. I mean, we have worked our tail off all week for this moment right here. Okay, through all the heat and everything, all the adversity, we worked for this moment right here, and these guys showed up tonight. They showed up and showed out tonight. All righty then, Kane Bay and Ashley Ridge. Do we have a camera? There we go. Kane Bay and Ashley Ridge. Kane Bay is riding high. What an impressive win over Buford in their debut on TV last week. Ashley Ridge, a relative unknown. Their first game of the year, their first game under head coach Jeff Tate. He is a big name, a state championship winner in the upstate at Wren. So let's head out to Ashley Ridge. They're actually playing at Somerville High School while their turf gets repaired. And there is Jeff Tate picking up late in the third quarter. Ashley Ridge up 19-0, but Kane Bay would battle back. Ashley Ridge possession. Ashley Ridge QB Trevor Callis drops back to pass, but he's picked off by Kane Bay. So it's Kane Bay ball. Mark Stewart hands the ball off to Bryson Johnson for the five-yard touchdown right there. Do we have a game? Still in the third. QB Mark Stewart hands it off to Deshaun Tompkins. He picks up 12 yards before the quarter ends. Start of the fourth. Bryson Johnson gets the handoff and he punches it in for the two-yard touchdown down right there, but Ashley Ridge would respond. ARQB drops back and he finds his tight end. Dwayne Simeons for the touchdown. It's a 30 yarder. What a grab. 33 12. How about that in the Jeff Tate debut? Day one of the job interview with the turbulent offseason of the Fort Dorchester Patriots. Steve LaPrad fired, then rehired, then retired. The Patriots opting to name Josh Smith the interim head coach for the season. He wants the job badly each time out. In essence, a resume builder or breaker. That's pressure. Fort, Patri Fort D's Patriots planning for the second half as a family. Buford up 10 to 7 at the half. Strikes first in the second. Running back Jaden Andrews races through the Patriots D for a long touchdown run. 17 to 7 Eagles. But Fort Dorchester's running back Ryan Campbell coming up here. He's going to cut around the edge for the short yardage touchdown. Now 17 to 14 Eagles. Later, we're going to take it to the air. Fort Dorchester's Bennett Riffer with the long toss. And Jalen Berry's on the other end in the end zone. Fort Dorchester takes the lead 21 to 7. The Fort wins it in the Josh Smith debut. All right, let's talk about Somerville heading up to Myrtle Beach tonight to play Carolina Forest. And that's the Somerville team that is the top ranked team in the state. However, Green Wave tough on defense, giving way to the O. Fourth down, Jaden Cummings, quick strike to Quintrell Pettiford right there. He does the rest from there, shaking through the D. And that's a 7 0 Somerville lead. Panthers settle in, move to the second. Talk about parting the Red Sea. Khalil Johnson through the hole and he throws on the Jets. The tailback breaks a huge run on his way to pulling. CF 
even, knotted at seven, under six before the half. Later in the frame, Green Wave march right down the field, cap it by this. Cummings quarterback keeper, he's the Hanahan transfer. Somerville up 13-7 at the break. They would stretch it and Somerville hangs on to win it. 33-26 is the final from up in Myrtle Beach tonight. Stall at James Island. Wojo in the house. That is Asher Wojciechowski, longtime major league pitcher, taking in the game. He lives across the street. All James Island all the time. Braxton Scott with the keeper. That's a touchdown. Then James Island, the defense steps up. They will force the fumble. Coleman Jones is Johnny on the spot there to pick it up right in front of him. What field position they have. Braxton Scott then will hand off to Amore Scott and he has to Amore this. It is a touchdown. James Island and they are rolling tonight over stall. A, a huge sack after that for Junior Maxwell but gets a bit scary. A bad stall injury. It was a broken leg. They end up having to call the game early. Both teams agree on that. They just said it was getting a bit dangerous. 51-0. James Island wins that ball game. West Ashley they're prepping on a long drive to take on Bluffton. The Bobcats get the ball first, but struggle a bit to start the game. Meanwhile, it's May River Sharks quarterback Tanner Macy. This long sideline toss to Asa Haskins, who races it in for the score. The extra point makes it seven to nothing Sharks. But after that, West Ashley goes wild. What a performance as the Wildcats go on to win it 31 to 7. That's your final from Bluffton. Tremendous thank you to Sonia Stevens for picking this up. Where did you pick up that jacket, by the way? I don't know. It looks, looks very, very nice. familiar. It, this is from the uh, Iceberg from collection. From the Iceberg yes. collection. If you go on the inside That's of what it, happens when you look, fight look right there. It, goes, it says made for Scott Iceberg, there but I think go. it's made for Webb Wright. We'll see you right back after the break. This is Preferred Home Services Friday Night Rivals, driven by Crew Chevrolet on News 4. Welcome back. What a wild week it was for two teams in relatively similar situations this week. Hanahan and Berkeley. They both fired legendary head coaches last year. Both hired guys unknown to our area from out of state. And both coming out in their debuts and winning. Berkeley squeaking by Timberland in a Wild West shootout and Hanahan. Rides Kevin Rivera's six touchdowns to a victory over Georgetown. So let's head out to MoCo tonight. Berkeley trailing 7 0 at home to Hanahan to start the second quarter, but the Stags coming out firing after that. Caden Bash on the late pass from Henry Rivers. Rivers just a freshman. He's unreal. Bash with some room to run takes off and it's down inside the 10. That would set up the ground game. Josh Small's off right tackle and he just has to shake an arm, gets to the end zone and the Stags tie it up with the PAT. Later in the quarter, more ground game from Berkeley. Isaiah Palmer this time up the middle, virtually untouched for the score. Berkeley wins it. An incredible game over Hanahan. Just ended a few moments ago. 34-33 is the final score. St. James Sharks hosting the Philip Simmons Iron Horses. And it's Sherrod Williams. Watch him here. He's going to find the corner, and this senior has some giddy up. Watch him go 68 yards. He puts the iron horses up first, seven to nothing. And some of the fans aren't happy like this one right here. It's construction crew night over there at the stadium. At least that's the theme. Philip Simmons back with the ball, and if it ain't broke, why fix it? This time, Markellis. KJ Ashbury finds the corner on the handoff and he is gone. Another big scamper and score. The horses are off to the races early. This one, 81 yards. This game was a barn burner last year, but the horses running away early with this one. The Sharks building momentum down 14. Connor Schwamm connects with Jace Shropshire for the big game, putting them into red, the red zone. Another high scoring affair. But the bell cows for Philip Simmons get it done. The horses 41, the sharks 30. That's a big win for them. Simply put, 
The unimaginable happened today at Bishop England High School as we discussed earlier in the newscasts. Our thoughts, our prayers, our condolences go out to the entire battling Bishop community. Of course, there was no game tonight played between BE and First Baptist. No makeup game announced. Naturally, that will take a backseat. Time is needed. No school on Monday. Football, of course, by far not important in this situation. Meanwhile, Timberland hosting Indian land and facing a 7-0 deficit early on heading into the fourth quarter. But before they get there, Amir Milligan doing some damage on the ground up the middle. A little spin move to break away. He takes it down into the red zone. The Wolves back up a little due to penalties, but Milligan again this time on the sweep with some speed. He'll find the end zone. But the conversion would be crucial. The Wolves failing on the two-point try. That keeps them down a point, and that's where they'd be with the last second play. No go for the Wolves. Timberland falls to Indian land by a final of 7-6. to six. No matter how you slice it, no matter the year or the records, it's just one of those games that means more. The best 1A rivalry our area has to offer, the oldest one too. The neighboring islands going at it, both falling in week zero battles. Nothing else matters when Baptist Hill and St. John's meet up. The bigger staff stadium, there is St. John's head coach Mike Howard, and he's not a happy man tonight. Tough night for the Islanders. Baptist Hill quarterback Harold Gathers over the top finds Romaine Grant. Grant slips away, gets a nice run there. The ball pops out, picks it up himself, gives him good field position from there. Gathers. Scores it himself, and Baptist Hill is cruising over their rivals from St. John's, or John's Island, rather. 44-8 to eight is the final. All right, that is academic magnet and military magnet. Webb, you shot this game, right? Oh, yeah, it's very good. I can tell you what happened All right, right here. tell me what happened, because I don't know. Military magnet's going to punt it away, and <laughs> academic magnet, the Raptors fumble it. And Military Magnet gets it back. But you know what? Neither of these teams really doing very well on offense. This is still in the first quarter. This pass is going to be picked off by Military Magnet. You would think they have a chance to score first. Nice little run coming up here. That gets them inside the 30. But from there, the Raptors' defense would stiffen. And then on fourth down, Military Magnet trying to go for it. But the pass is short. And this one would end up the final score being Academic Magnet 14 to 12 over Military Magnet. South Florence and Oceanside, a 4A state champion, a 2A runner up, throw those classifications away. Last year it was South Florence that escaped, and I mean escaped the land charts by one point on the road. Tonight, tables turn, they come to Mount Pleasant. South Florence coming off a win or dismantling of 5A Goose Creek. A little more breathing room this time for South Florence. They were up 14-0 at the half. Oceanside trying to get something going. But look, over the top, it's Quincy Rhodes with the pick. But South Florence can't do anything with it. From there, they get the ball back, and it's a pick six. C.J. Moskus for the Land Sharks takes it to the pay window. The extra point would be no good, 14-6. The lead is cut to eight. From there, the Land Sharks get it back. Some happy campers for Oceanside. They're trying to get this game tied up instead. Jameer Edwards has other ideas. Pick six on one side. How about a pick six on the other side for the Bruins? They take it to the house. The extra point would be good. That made it a 21 to six ball game. Oceanside, however, they would not go away. Trying to get back into this one. And the pass here is going to be complete as the Land Sharks get it inside the five, but the Bruins defense stiffens. Fourth and goal inside the one. A little controversy here. Do the land sharks get in? They say they do, but the officials are going to rule the knee hit before the ball crosses the plane. That means the Bruins hold, and they go on to win this one tonight by a final of 28-6. to six. If there is one team that is just shocking this year, it is this one. Northwood Academy comes into the year on a 29-game losing streak. Johnny Waters has them at 2 and 0, 49 39 over Colleton Prep. How about that? We'll be back with some skis of pleases after the break. This is Preferred Home Services Friday Night Rivals, driven by Crew Chevrolet on News 4. 
Welcome back. Skis a please a portion of the program. The Burke Bulldogs, the Porter Gout Cyclones, they have a wonderful relationship. Burke sends their band over to Porter, who doesn't have one for games when the Bulldogs are on the road. Unfortunately for the Bulldogs, that has nothing to do with the football programs. And Porter's numbers simply far greater than Burke's. Porter not having to play guys both ways and special teams, just something that wears a team down. Out to Stony Field, Earl Brown, Burke head coach. He is the son of the legend, <laughs> and I'll, I'll do these highlights because I shot him. Why not? Okay, why not? Austin Smith, that's a tackle for loss. I'm sure there's some some parents on uh, Porter Gow that are otolaryngologists. Maybe somebody there, somebody from Burke that can just help me out with my throat here. But that was a muff punt. Great field position. Jamal Flood, touchdown. All Porter Gow tonight. They win this one. 49-6 is the final score. How about Devontae Holloman looking for his first win as a head coach? Remember him from the Gamecocks? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Dallas Cowboys. Pretty good player. Six minutes into the second quarter, Lawrence Manning QB, Granger Powell drops back, hits. Uh, that's a Pinewood prep uh, hit. Zach Tyler causes a fumble picked up by Pinewood. And the Panthers, though, would un be unable to capitalize. Lawrence Manning with the ball. Granger Powell, great name for a quarterback. Drops back, floats a ball right to his wide receiver, Daniel Wiggins. 70-yard touchdown. Lawrence Manning uh, up 7-6. Pinewood, though, with the ball. Third and 10. Asa Windham scrambles out of the backfield. Gets the 10 yards and more as he is hit out of bounds. Very next play. Asa will scramble. Juke a couple of players. Gets a 12 yard touchdown. He's in the box score, but Lawrence Manning wins this one 34-19, the final. To the Park West Regional Complex, where we pick up Palmetto Christian taking on the Stallions of Williamsburg Academy. The Stallions are leading 21-0 in the first quarter when Stallions QB Conrad Balder calls his own number. He scampers 25 yards to pay dirt. Two-point conversion takes Williamsburg that brings them a 29 to nothing lead. Not only can Balder run, but he's got a pretty good arm. He hooks up with Wes Smith for a 21 yard touchdown toss. 36 to nothing. Unfortunately, PC can't get it done on offense or defense. Balder with a little dunk pass to Travis Bennett. The end zone without being touched. 43 to nothing just before the half. Michael Balder, Conrad's brother, cousin. Well, I'm sure they're related. He's under center and trots 50 yards to take the Stallions to 49 to nothing. They did miss an extra point, but that's about all they did wrong as they go on to win that one tonight. Big time. No, we'll be back right after the break. Attention also, I know it's a Chattanooga score, but we're talking about Eric Kimry, the former Gamecock quarterback. Baylor playing in Ireland, the same as Notre Dame will to, uh, tomorrow. Uh, they get the win 42-7 in Ireland tonight. How about that? Your Chattanooga update tomorrow. Check it out. 730 at night. SC State right here on ABC News 4. Have a great night, everybody.